All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer here this morning. Father, we love you. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for a good night's rest. I hope everyone slept well, Lord, our family as well. We appreciate the prayers, thoughts of those who uh, were praying for us as we had a long travel day yesterday, Lord. A lot of cars and trucks on the road, but we thank you for safety, protection, a smooth trip, Lord. Thank you for the safety you've given the Kimmels as they were down here, Lord, for most of this week and uh, at Victory Baptist Bible now with us this morning. We certainly pray for them, Lord. Give them freshness and strength as they teach and preach this morning. And then, Lord, as they hit the road as well for traveling to Michigan. We pray for a good travel day, safety protection for them as well. Use them, Lord, here at this church. May we be an encouragement and blessing to them as I know that they will be to us. Lord, we thank you for this Memorial Day weekend as we remember, Lord, those who uh, have served and, Lord, were uh, killed in, in service or in some form, Lord, protecting this country. We thank you for our freedoms. We thank you for the freedom that we enjoy. We thank you, Lord, for your blessing on this country. And we ask your continued blessing, Lord, as this country honors you and glorifies you, Lord. We pray for, certainly for, uh, Lord, those that do not know you to turn to you, Lord, and know you as Savior. Lord, for those who have, but Lord, maybe have turned away from the word of God and the principles of the scriptures, Lord. Pray that we would have a turning back, Lord, to the things of the word of God and standing on the absolutes of the scriptures, Lord. And we thank you again, Lord, for those who are actively serving now, but especially for those who pay the ultimate price, Lord, for our freedoms, that we can enjoy this service today, that we can enjoy picnics tomorrow and the day off and the freedoms that many people around the world do not have an opportunity to enjoy, Lord. Thank you again for your goodness, your love, your faithfulness. Thank you for the freedom and the liberty we have in Jesus Christ through salvation and eternal home in heaven. We love you and thank you. May you be glorified today in the services, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, ladies. It is so nice to see you all. I always feel like I'm coming home when I come to Durier. We used to live in Mountaintop, which is fun because of your, where you are in relationship to that. But we've been here in your services through the years, and it's always a blessing to see you all and to have this time. This is our first road trip since I had back surgery, so we've had to learn to take it kind of a little bit slower than we usually um, do. We, the first day we were so excited and we overdid just a little, so we've learned the rest of our trip that we need to kind of take our time and stop and get out. We've been in, you're the fourth church, and we've had wonderful services. It's been really a, a sweet time. And I also got to see my almost two-year-old grandson. He and his mommy and daddy live in Connecticut, and we just had the sweetest time with them in the weeks between the services. And John sent, our son sent us a picture last night with this sad, sad little face. He had just gotten his bath and evidently realized that we weren't coming back, and, and it was so precious. And I thought, ooh, I, I, no wonder I cried to leave him. He was crying to, for me to go, so it was fun. Um, but I'm doing well. The trip has gone well, and I thank you for your prayers that everything has been going great. The doctor's pleased. My pain is all but gone, and um, it's a real answer to prayer. I do have to have hand surgery, though, when we get home, so we're just, we're just a mess. We, Dave and I joke that if you put the two of us together, we might make a hole. <laughs> we really need both of us right now. What hurts on me doesn't hurt on him, but what hurts on him doesn't on me. So we just kind of do what we, we can to, to make it. He had to cook for me with my back. And he's not, oh my goodness, he just really stressed over it, but he did fine. And, but now with my hand, I tell him he's going to have to put on my makeup and fix my hair. <laughs> <laughs> so if you see me with a mask and sunglasses and a hat, you'll know that it didn't work out too well. But um, yeah, hope. Joe, look what he did with his hair. Well, yeah, I don't know if that's positive or negative, though, Laura. <laughs> he shaved his off. So we'll see. I have my hairdresser on alert. She said, if you need a really good shampoo, she said, you come on over and I'll take care of you. So I think she'll have my back. Well, I want to just share a lesson with you today that is with missions. Do you know, without being able to do our normal traveling this so far this year until now, uh, my heart is stirred for missions and feel like I have not been able to really be um, after what God has called us to do uh, these last few months. So I'm excited to be back to teaching. 
But my heart is burdened for us to realize the mission field that we are in. As our country makes the choices that it's making as a nation, things are, are a little uncertain and the things that we have taken for granted have become more important and, and more vital to us when we realize that this is, you know, just not, something's not right. We all went through COVID. We saw people get very sick. We saw people get uh, just a mild case. We know of those that went to be with the Lord. And if anything that we can learn from these months of, of years of sickness is how much we need the Lord. He is unchanging. And his love for us and his uh, working in our hearts is not limited in any way. And we need him. As we have worked with the Chinese, we have seen their dependence on God is completely different than the American church. They have no one else. They risk everything to get up and to do what you and I have just taken the routine schedule this morning to be here. And we need to realize that in other countries and in most other countries, that it is a risk to get up and to do what you and I have done today. And that's just get dressed and come to church. So we need missionaries. We need us to be aware. The missions conference that we did at Victory Baptist, it was, they asked uh, my husband to do a real focus on Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost part of the earth. And it was a challenge to, to really minister to our community as we think of Jerusalem being wherever we are and how we need to be missionaries, not just sending missionaries. We need to be missionaries and to have a burden and a heart for those around us. The Lord has kept each one of us here for a certain reason. And sometimes it's easy to get so busy with the routine of our lives that we forget or we miss his purposes for us. And he desires us to be walking in obedience to him in this area of being a witness and being a missionary. I really appreciated that young man's testimony. Wow, that was, that was such a blessing for him to see his classmates being his mission field. And what a wonderful outlook. And God's going to use him, if I'm sure he is already using him, with a heart like that. But for you and I to be as complete as God wants us to be in our lives here on earth, it's going to mean that we are walking a path that is going to bring him great glory. And the thing that brings him the greatest glory is when we share who he is, when we introduce him to those around us, when we encourage those that are serving him, either locally or in the foreign field. But our, God has put us here and called us to an important role, and that is for you and I to be missionaries wherever we are. So will you take your Bibles, please, and go with me to Ephesians chapter 2. We're going to look at a number of verses today. And I have my little bag of visuals. They were teasing me at, um, at Victory last Sunday that my bag has gotten smaller through the years. And I said, yeah, with my back, I've got to have smaller visuals, so a smaller bag. So they're still in there, though, and we're going to look and see what's there. In Ephesians chapter 2, I want us to look at verse 10. <clears throat> a familiar verse Actually, two familiar verses are right before it. Let's start with verse 8. It says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, I thank you so much for the privilege that we have of knowing you and the joy that we can have in sharing you. And we pray, Lord, that you would just challenge all of our hearts now to be more um, aware of those around us that need you. Help us to realize our responsibility to our Jerusalem. Help us, Lord, to be able to picture what you would have us to do that we might go out and to do that work this week. 
I thank you for your love and your patience with us. And I pray that you would just guide as I speak today and share these truths. I pray that the ladies' hearts would be touched, Lord, through your word. I ask that you would just challenge us and encourage us as we share this wor these words together. In your name I pray, amen. We need to realize that God has a plan for each of us. If he did not, we would not need to be here. He would have taken us to heaven when we were saved. And our, our ministry and our work would be done. But we need to realize that he does have a plan for us. And one of the things that we can look at to see what this plan is like is puzzle pieces. I don't know if you like to do puzzles or not. I do good with the 25 or less. I have done some bigger ones, but when I get the border done, I'm pretty much done. When the kids were growing up, Dave would do puzzles with them, and I would make popcorn because they knew I was not too good at putting the pieces together. So they'd say, can we have some popcorn? And they knew I'd go away and make popcorn. When we were born into this world, though, we were like these pieces, these plain pieces. There's nothing there but a sinful heart. The Bible tells us that all of us had a sinful heart as we came into this world. And as we, we realize who we are and what we are, we see in these first verses that by grace we are saved through faith. It's not anything that we can do of ourselves. The Lord Jesus did it all for us. And when we realize what he's done for us, it's like changing the puzzle piece from this blank and, and plain to the colorful. When we put them together, we see that it makes a part of a picture, but it fits in and it makes a part of the whole. If we had the whole puzzle with us today and had just these two pieces away, we would not have that, that complete picture because these pieces wouldn't be in it. God has called us first to salvation and giving us a new life. Old things are passed away, behold, all things are become new. And with this change, there's an important ministry or job or, or purpose that God gives to each of us. It's not just a random thing. It is a calling that God gives to us. Do you know, we often think of callings as being to someone called into ministry or called to the mission field. I think sometimes we use that word too much. We can use it as an excuse. Well, they were called and I was not. But actually, as we read God's word, we see that all of us are called. And he has a particular purpose for us. No one else can do the job that God created you to do. Others may try. They may try to, to implement and help, but it will never be the same. God has a purpose for each of us, and we were created to fulfill that purpose. The verse in um, 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So if we are to accomplish what God has for us, we need to know what the will of God is for each of us. And sometimes we get very stressed over that. And yet it is really a very simple answer to that. As he puts us within the settings that he's given us, he has a purpose with us being there to minister and to serve others. Will you go now to Revelation, please? I'm doing a good job this morning, dropping everything. That's why I need hand surgery, I think. Hope it will have Velcro when I'm done, that I will be able to really hang on to things. All right, Revelation chapter 7 and verse number 2, um, excuse me, verse number 9. Revelation 7, 9 says this. After this I beheld and lo a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. This pictures for us the will of God. 
as we see this gathering of all nations, all kindred, people, and tongues, they are, we are, will be around the throne praising and giving glory to God. And God desires, and his purpose in, in our lives is for us to help him help gather these people that will one day stand before his throne and praise him. And as you look at this, you see it's from all nations, all kindreds, all people, all tongues. This means it's a, a worldwide gathering. I never left this country other than Canada. I didn't go what I think of as abroad until after I was 60. And I have been to Asia six times, all over Asia, all over India. I've been in six airports in India. If you've traveled in India, you know that that is an incredible experience to be in one, let alone six. But as I think of these travels that God has given me, I can picture this better than I used to. As I have been in airports, the only Western person there, and you realize that everyone is looking at you. As I've walked the streets and seen, in, like in Hong Kong, all the different nations represented on that main street that I was walking down. And as we look at this, it's not just Americans. It's not just North American continent or South America. This is a gathering of all nations. And our purpose on this earth is to help build this, this gathering. And that is to be a witness for us uh, to share God's God, uh, message of salvation, help people to grow and to walk with him, but realizing that there is nothing that brings God greater glory than someone trusting him as Savior. Nothing we could do to bring him greater glory than us sharing the gospel with someone else. So as we look at this verse, and we're going to follow <clears throat> the will of God, we need to know the will of God, and that is given to us right here. That this is what he wants us to be working towards. Have you looked up in the night sky and seen that bright star called the North Star? I think I can spot it. And it's there with a brightness, and it seems to be unmoving. The purpose of the, the, the sailors uh, used that star for was to guide them. And because it is directly over the North Pole, as the Earth rotates, it seems that that star stays in one place. Well, this verse should be our North Star. This should be the unchanging purpose that God has given to us. Now, that means it's going to be executed in different ways in all of our lives as individuals. You have contact and, and friendships that, with people that I will never even meet. Your sphere of influence is unique to you. Even you and your husband, if you do things together, there still is that section of your life that, that he's not a part of. If you notice, my husband is growing a beard and shaving his head. I don't intend to let him do that to me. I'm going to go to someone, and it, he doesn't go to the someone that I go to. I go to this trendy little shop, and it is so funny. My little hairdresser loves me, and it's so sweet and kind. She's, I've invited her to church, and she's come with me. And Her lifestyle is probably as different as can be. But she's my little mission field as I get my hair done. But I have friends, I have contacts that my husband doesn't, and vice versa. And God wants each of us to realize that he has given us this sphere of influence for his glory. You and I need to be walking on the path that God has for us, not missing the things that he has given to us. In Psalm 37, 23, will you go there with me? Psalm 37, 23. It says, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Do you know, God does not always give us a lot of information for the future. It says here that our steps are ordered by the Lord. He doesn't give us the whole route. 
He gives it to us step by step for us to follow him as he leads us. I want us to use a comparison here. I have in here a map. Now, I bring this along because I know that the younger girls in the audience do not know what maps are like we used to. You may recognize them. But this is what we had, only what we had in years gone by was a map and it would show the whole state at once. Can you imagine opening this up in the front seat of your car and trying to read it? It's very easy to cover the windshield with this, but it's very difficult to locate something. This is one state. Now you can get an atlas that has all the states and they're smaller, but that doesn't make them easier to read. But this is going to represent for us what the world gives us. They tell us, okay, if you want to be such and such, this is the map that you need to follow. You need to just do these things and you will come out healthy, wealthy, and wise, okay? But the world gives us these maps to follow. But I have noticed <clears throat> the hardest thing with using a map is folding it back. It, it, it takes a lot of experience to do that. As you can see, I was fortunate this time, but there have been other times it doesn't work so well. I believe that God gives us something different than a map. I believe he gives us a compass. A compass always shows us where north is. I have no idea north, south, east, and west, but they tell me that this compass will always point to the north. And you just simply have to turn it until the, the N and the arrow match. And that will give you what direction is north. Now, what you do with it, I have no idea, all right? <laughs> but that is north, just in case anybody. My mom used to say, you know those flowers on the east side of my house? And I said, would say to her, Mom, I have no idea what the east side of my house is, let alone yours in Michigan. But... I believe that this verse that we shared from Revelation is the North Star for you and I to follow. To bring God glory through sharing his word. That is our purpose. And as we walk by faith with that mindset that I'm going to be, I want to be used by God to share his precious message, then God will give us the details. And that would be like getting the map. But you know what? He sometimes says, step first. The steps of a good man. I need you to take a couple steps in this direction. And he shows us then his power and his faithfulness as we seek to obey him. So the north star of our lives should be always to bring glory to God through sharing his word and his precious message to those around us. Now, that means that we all are missionaries, but then we can apply this specifically then to missions. So to do that, I'm going to start with these ropes. Now, I'm going to, you are a wonderful church that cares for, for missions, and I, I love that. The Lord has given us such wonderful uh, partnering churches. We appreciate it so much. I'm going to pretend that I am your church. All right, and each one of these ropes represent a missionary on a different field. So this is kind of a short one. This one may represent a, a, a home mission that you are that you contribute to, that you that you support, that you pray for, and they're not really that far away. So we can kind of have that feel. Maybe it's a church plant or a ministry to a certain group of people here in the states. So that is that is closer to home. But we need to have that connection. And we need to be holding them up in prayer and ministering to them. Now, this next one, I'm going to see if I can I gotta take my microphone here since I'm tethered. I want to give this one to Katie. Now, this one is a little bit further away, but it is still a mission field. And as I, as a church, as, a church, as you ladies, as a part of this church, you are holding them up no matter where they are. So let's see if we can build this. Why don't you just pass that back, Katie, and we'll see how far it goes. Just keep passing it back. There we go. That may be as far as we can take it, but again, it's another mission field. Let's do another one. May I hand this to you, and you pass it to those behind you? 
oh, this isn't very long. You, you hold it for me. This is, this, yeah, that's not, not going to work, is it? Uh, this one may not be too, too far either. But you're, I, do you get the idea? And, and we, the more that we are hanging on to, the greater the responsibility. But we are part of all of these ministries as we send financial gifts as well as prayer. Do you know what? If you've got to only send one, send your prayers. Because that is calling on, on God to be with those people and support them. You may not know what's going on. But it could come at a moment that they need extra encouragement through your prayers. And you as a church are holding on to these and supporting them. Don't ever forget it. But you are sending out, and this is one of the tools of missions. Now we can switch it around, and my time is going quick, I imagine. If we were to say that I am the missionary, and all of you are the churches, that means that as I serve the Lord on a mission field, that I can realize that I have all of these churches praying for me, and that is an incredible blessing. So as you think of your missionaries, it may be easy to say, oh, I'm sure there's others praying for them. No, your role is so important as you connect with them. That connection in letters and notes, back and forth in whatever form, strengthens the ministry that God has given to those important people. Do you see what I'm saying? Whether we look at it as from the church perspective or the missionary's perspective, the connection is vital. And you know what I found? It is the ladies of the church that bring real life to the missions part of the church. As you reach out and love sister to sister, it is an incredible encouragement. The joy of missions, the real heartbeat of missions, comes from ladies in the church, I believe, that are reaching out in love to minister to those that are on the field. Thank you. You all can let go. But do you see what I'm saying? The more that is there, the greater the strength. Let's see what else I have. Oh, my goodness. Sorry. I have some other things that help us represent what we're doing. That first one was the ropes. Let's do, um, we touched on this. I have also walkie-talkies. Aren't these adorable? <laughs> Amazon has everything I need. I think you can even change the color of the faces. But these represent our communication. It can be our communication with God as we pray. It can be our communication to the missionaries that we minister to, that we are sending those notes, those cards, those uh, gifts, whatever it might be, that we have that communication. But far greater than that is our communication with God on their behalf. I'm afraid that we have uh, become so familiar with prayer that we take it for granted. And we forget that when we pray, we are coming before the throne of God, who is all-powerful, who just spoke and the worlds were created, who parted the Red Sea, and, and all of the incredible things that we read in his word. We are communicating with that God. And as we go to him and, and pray, and we are ministering then to those that are out in the foreign fields or in, in, in uh, home missions, but also we are praying on behalf of our mission field that we are reaching out with God's power to be able to be used by him in this area. Do you know there's so many things going on in our world today. My husband has shared it with this week and he may mention it this morning. But with all of the influx of, of people from across the border, we need to look at that as the mission field coming to us as busloads of those people are transferred to different cities across our nation. You may not like the, the fact that how they've come in. You may not be comfortable with the openness. We work right on the border in Mission, Texas, and we have seen the places 
where you can ease you know, that the people co are coming across. We know right where the the re uh, retention camps are and the cages and all of the horrible things. And those people are are flooding in to that area where our friends minister. And I I remember Pastor Roy saying one of our first visits there as we worked um, there with him. He said if people come across the border in this, in this period of time where he was speaking. He said, if they get sent back, they've been with us, they've heard the gospel, they've gotten saved, we've gotten them grounded. And he said that the authorities that send them back home are the greatest mission agency that he knew of. As the people come to this country. Now, we know that some might, it might not be the sending back that it used to be. But then we must realize that the people coming in are our mission field that's coming to us. But sometimes we don't see it that way. So I have these little glasses, and these represent the fact that we need to realize that we need to see clearly what is before us. We need to have, take a close look and see what is it that God has for me to do. Who is it in my life that is from away, that is from a different country? I read a statistic that 95% of exchange students in colleges will never be in an American home, a, a saved family's home, in their four years of college. Isn't that sad? We need to be welcoming those people that are coming here, whether they're coming to study or to, to work or illegally. They're coming, and our eyes need to be seeing them as souls that need the Savior. We need to be seeing our mission field just as much as those that we send to the field. It says in Jeremiah 12, 5, If thou hast run with the footmen, and they have wearied thee, then how canst thou contend with horses? And if in the land of peace, wherein thou trustest, they weary thee, then how wilt thou do in the swelling of Jordan? What that verse is saying is that if we can't handle it now, how are we going to handle it when it gets harder? Most of you have heard our story of how we were, had to leave China, that we were being um, pursued, they, know where, they knew where we were. They made their point that they wanted us to leave. I know the fear of that. I have been in a gathering of people that only half of them were able to get in because of the authorities with guns at the entrance. People in, in China and India go to church with the, a great risk. And you and I need to realize what's happening around the world and have a desire to be in prayer and minister to them from afar however you can. But if we don't see those around us as souls needing to be saved, do you really think you understand what the souls in other countries need if you are oblivious to the needs of those right around you? I pray that the Lord will give us eyes to see. Hearts that are open, hearts that are willing to be a part, whether it's a short term, whether it's full time, or whether it's sending our children and allowing them to go. The last thing I have is a pair of boots. I didn't bring my husband's boots. I just brought a picture. This is for those that are willing to go. We all need to put on our boots and be willing to go where God calls us. It may just be to the neighbor. It may be to the, the family across the street. It may be a coworker. It may be an acquaintance that you've made that, you, that just in a casual way you see a friendship building. Maybe it is to go to a foreign field. Maybe it's to let go of our kids and give them to God for him to take them where he wants them. I remember the day that I, we put our son on an airplane to go to Hong Kong. The next week we moved to Wisconsin. It was rough. I probably cried more in one, one sitting than I ever had. 
because it was a very unknown for me. But it represents eight years of his life, and he hopes to go back. To put on those boots and are wanting to see our children and grandchildren be willing to do that. You and I must be willing as well to do whatever it is that God has for us, to truly engage in ministering to others. And the final thing that I have is a candle. And this represents the light that God wants us to be. As our world and our nation gets darker and darker under the control of sinful things, our lights will be brighter if we are walking with the Lord as we should. The contrast will be more evident. Do you realize there's no amount of darkness that can, can quench a, a light? It doesn't have to be a huge light. It doesn't have to be powerful. This little candle could be seen in a dark room. You and I need to be whatever light God wants us to be and allow him to use us in our world and in our community for his glory and for the purpose of helping gathering people to know God's precious message of salvation, that they too may stand one day around his throne and sing praises to the Lamb. We all have a role to fulfill. Yes, we need to give to missions. Yes, we need to be able to say that we support and encourage our kids to serve the Lord. But we also need to be very aware of the mission field that God has called us to. And may we then be the lights that he has for us. I assume that bell means the end. It's like the five minute five bell. bell? All right. That gives me just a little bit of warning. Thank you. So ladies, my heart is to challenge you in this area to be the witnesses that God has for us to be. When we were in um, Connecticut visiting our son, we went by the mall to pick up a couple things. And because of um, my situation, we took the escalator. No, 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 the elevator. And as we were getting on the elevator, there was a little gal that came running. And just we hold, held the door so she could get in just in time for it to go down. And we just chatted with her briefly. It was just from one floor to the next. But we started the co a conversation with her, and she was on her lunch break from work. We went to Starbucks to get a coffee before we headed out, and she was there too. So when we thought, oh my goodness, this girl's going to think we're stalking her. So the, it was full. The only place to sit was right beside her. So I went over and I said, I don't want you to think we're stalking you. She said, I was thinking the same thing. She said, I saw you in line, and I thought, oh, no, they're going to think I am. Well, Dave went up to get the order, and she and I sat there and visited. Complete stranger. I have no idea, you know, anything more about her other than that few minutes that we shared. I was able to share what we do and, and about the God that we serve. And, you know, we just never know, but we've got to have eyes that see and be ready and willing to be used by God. Let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for your love and your goodness to us. Thank you for the privilege that you give us of knowing you. And I ask, Lord, that you would just use each of us as you see fit. Help us to keep our focus on you and your purposes and what brings you greatest glory. Help us to love and support our missionaries and help each one of us, Lord, to minister in our mission field as you would have us to. In your precious name I pray, amen.